Hey guys, this is Rocking Eric. So I want to talk about how I haven't fapped for 17 days. Now, I don't remember the last time I even went 30 days without fapping. Um, if you don't know what that is, look it up. But I've been doing this, I've been fapping since I was, you know, 12 years old. But I didn't, I didn't go all the way so to speak until I was 16 and it was kind of by accident and I was so amazed by it and so excited it was a it was a it was a total release you know so I just fell in love with it and it was it's been my go-to ever since as a form of release a form of excitement um, a form of kinkiness and perversion and my life has been just my life has been like one big giant coping mechanism like I'm always doing something to not face something I don't know I mean I just I've been rocking since I was two years old I started listening to music my dad's music when I was you know eight or nine years old we'd, we'd go on these long boring road trips you know my dad loved to going on road trips once a year and he would take my sister and I and my mom and we would stop by these really boring museums and my my only outlet being stuck in that car for days at a time was you know music my Walkman I grew up in the 80s and I listened to my dad's music and then when I was 12 I discovered hard rock and that was you know that was life-changing so I've been I've been with these things my my whole life I'm 51 I'll be 52 in eight days and uh, I'm a cancer and I'm I'm quiet I I observe before I speak usually uh, I do put my foot in my mouth I get manic sometimes I get overexcited I I rush into things. I'm gullible. My my friends used to uh, exploit that gullibility. You know, they would they would lie to me and say things that they knew would excite me, and then they would yank it away from me. You know, um, so my friends were mean, and uh, I grew up in a small town. And uh, but the one thing that my friends or my parents never talked to me about was my rocking it was just something i did my friends never talked about it um, my girlfriends never talked about it i don't think i've had one person say anything derogatory about my rocking they put down other things about me they'd say i was weird they would say you know that i was a dork or a, a geek but they never took they never put me down for my rocking and and i i thank my parents my parents are still alive they're over 80 years old they're they've been married for 60 years and uh, i had a great i had a great childhood but i always had uh perversions uh, you know and these you know, the bible says that we're born sinners and i believe it because when i was you know 7 and seven eight years old i used to play with my butt and uh, i used to rock and listen to music and everything i'm doing today um so to stop fapping is really really a big deal and i i couldn't do it without god this time without jesus and, and don't turn this off this is this is not a biblical channel i'm just saying that i needed a higher power and I, that's why I'm doing these videos also is because I need accountability partners who are struggling with fapping, who, who might stem too much. You know, I, I don't, I don't think stemming is a bad thing. I think it helps self-regulate. And, uh, you know, when I did stop rocking, a lot of people were like, why are you stopping rocking? You don't have to, it's not a bad thing. And I agree now. I mean, I, I quit rocking for two months last year or a year before. Um, and I always felt like I was just in a stagnant energy. You know, 
I compare it to being stop, stopped at a stoplight. It feels like stagnant energy. When I stop rocking, it feels like I'm at a, a red light. And I want that red light to turn green really bad. Um, as far as the fapping has gone, I, I have an addictive personality. So over the years, my fapping has evolved and it's gotten darker and more kinky and more perverted. And that's why, um, that's why they call this, the seven sins deadly sins. Because if you're an addict like me, most of these sins are addict based. So what that means is that you always have to up the ante to get the same buzz. You know, nothing fills your heart uh, except, you know, the Holy Spirit and love and forgiveness and gratitude. And those are godly things. But with the dead, deadly sins, they, they entice you. They, they're, they look very appealing in the beginning and they eventually take away everything they gave you. It's a big lie. Okay, and you usually have to increase the addiction to get the same buzz. You know, you've heard of that with alcohol, with drugs. People get an endurance and they have to do more to get the buzz. Well, it's the same thing with uh, fapping. For me, I'm an addict. So it's gotten darker. Um, there's been times in my life where I've, I've cross-dressed a little. Uh, my whole thing is like, white little socks like dainty you know i i like the feminine um i like the feminine i mean i remember always being a foot guy or a sock guy even when i was a little boy i would drop my pencil to look at girls socks and shoes um so then when i was single for a couple of years i was like you know what i'm gonna just get go all the way with this kinky perversion and be more feminine and i've experimented with bisexuality also and uh i think it stems from me wanting to play with my my butt you know so i'm just like why not just go all the way with that as well um and i also thought bisexuality was cool in my 20s because some of the people that i looked up to the artists, the musicians, some of them were uh, bisexual. Anything goes really in the in the dark the dark world. Okay, I don't want to call it. I mean, I guess it's Satan's world. Really, anything goes. I mean, there's no morals. Anything goes, and you can push it as far as you can go. I remember I I lived uh, outside of Seattle, Port Townsend, and um, I I went to Seattle one day to go to, a, I think it was the Oasis concert. And I went with an ex-girlfriend, had a blast, got a buzz, was running around the Coliseum. We were manic, both her and I, and we were running around the Oasis concert. And after we left, I somehow ran into a drug dealer and scored some crack and never done it before. And it was so powerful. I went back to the ATM to get more money five times. By 4 a.m., we were walking around Seattle. And I, uh, we, we went into the Lusty Lady. It was a strip, you know, a strip club. And uh, if you know Seattle, you probably know what Lusty Lady is. Anyways, 4 a.m. is different than during the day okay at night in cities it's like demons come out pure evil and seattle's way worse than it was i mean seattle's way worse now than it was back then i mean it's really bad now but i went into the lusty lady and you can just feel the dark energy and i went into the bathroom and it smelled weird. It, it smelled like feces, but it, it wasn't like someone was just taking a normal dump. It was like they were doing something with their feces. It just had a different smell. And I've never been into that, thank God. But um, it, it reminded me back to the point, there's no morals, there's no limits. If you're an addict and you go into the sexual world, it, get, it can get very dark. Um, 
So here's some of the benefits of not fapping. One is you build up your self-esteem. And I've always been, I've always had low self-esteem because I'm always doing shady things that no one can see, you know, with myself, doing shady things with myself, perverted, kinky things. And so I've never been able to look people in the eye. Plus I have autism. So that's a social skills uh, deficiency. Let's call it that, okay? I know you guys know more about it than I do. You can be all technical if you want. It's boring for me to be technical. I'm just talking in my own, my own way. Um, so the perversion, I think I lost track. I think the perversion keeps growing. And um, it's just, oh yeah, the benefits of not fapping. The self-esteem, you boost your self-esteem and you get out of that cycle, that vicious cycle of shame and guilt. I, I'm so tired of being in shame and guilt. Even when I pretend I'm not shamed after I, ma after I fap. See, I always, after I fap, every single time, there's a little bit of shame, a little bit of guilt. And that's what Satan loves to do, is to get you trapped in that cycle of guilt and shame and condemnation. And I've been in prison my whole life since I was two or three. You know, when I was three years old, my dad had a very uh, scary temper and a uh, very scary temper. And, and I, he would spank me so hard and I'd be like, what did I do wrong? And so I formed toxic shame. And toxic shame is where you think that you are broken, that there's no hope for you. A healthy child would, would be spanked and go, okay, I did bad. I'm not going to do it again. But a sensitive person could take it further and say, I am bad. Not what I did is bad, but I am bad. So when I discovered fapping when I was eight or nine and successive, never successfully ejaculated till I was 16, so we're talking about pent up, pent up semen and everything for eight years, playing with my butt and tugging at it when I was eight, didn't actually ejaculate till I was 16. Now there's a damn gnat. So a lot of pent up, you know, pent up, uh, you know what I mean. So it was it was a rough childhood. And all I could turn to was my rocking, my music really loud in headphones, Iron Maiden, Ozzy, Judas Priest. I used to just fantasize and uh, look out the windows. You know, we had this big house on the hill overlooking the Puget Sound. And I could watch the freighters and the tugboats go by while listening to Ozzy and Iron Maiden. And slowly I, I started flunking classes I wanted to be a rock and roll drummer. So the things that I really liked as an autistic person was drumming. I was always drumming or humming songs. My mom finally got me a drum set when I was 12. So I had my music, I had my drum set, I had rocking, I had fapping, or at least trying to. I was always pushing hard like I wanted to pee when I was fapping. So I, did it, I didn't relax into it. And I never let it build up because I was constantly pushing. I thought that's what you did. So I've had these really dark spirits inside of me because I know from the perversion and I know what it can do. And I, I, I know that over the years, it's gotten more uh, scary, the thoughts. And especially the couple times that I tried meth, that's like a doorway to the de demonic perverted underworld. And we're talking the darkest thoughts I've ever had in my life and playing with myself literally from 10 o'clock at night until 10 in the morning, completely shaft my, my, my member until it was swollen red and, uh, shaved my legs and did just really kinky things. And the smell in the room was different. And you know, that the demons were just playing around in my room as I was doing that. It really is a spiritual war. Uh, if you don't believe me, read uh, 
They Shall Cast Out Demons by Derek Prince. Look at, watch, watch a few uh, near-death experience testimonies on YouTube where they go to hell. And this will scare the crap out of you. And this is what happened to me 17 days ago. I've watched near-death experience videos a lot in the last five years. But I recently watched them again. And I watched three in a row. And it scared the crap out of me. Because I don't want to die and go to hell. And I'm not saying masturbating is wrong. Okay, that's not what I'm saying. I don't want to be stuck in sin if I die. I don't want to go to a hell realm if there is one. Okay, and hell is real. I want to be right with God. And I'm tired of living in shame and guilt. And so if, if you feel the same way as me, please subscribe. I'm going to do a video every day about fapping and every day that I don't fap, I'll do a video unless I'm out on the road or traveling um, because I need you guys. I need to talk about this. Talking on video is just as good as therapy for me and it's free and I want to spread awareness. There is a guy who did fapping videos. Uh, his name was Gabe Dog. And he did lots of fapping videos, but for some reason he took them all down and disappeared. I still don't know what happened to him. And he changed my life because he was just transparent like this. And he just talked normal like this. And he would go on for an hour or two. And I, I think that what happened was he finally fapped. And he felt like a fraud. Or he committed suicide. Or he was just like, you know what, I'm going to pursue music. And I'm not going to do fapping videos anymore. But he took them all down. And it was a really sad day for me. And he was only like 25 years old. So don't underestimate your story and helping others. And that's why I'm doing this. Not only to take over Gabe Dog's place. I can't. I'm not trying to compete with him or replace him. I'm just saying, you know, this, this area needs more people to spread the awareness. If you know, about not, not fapping. No fap is basically the technical term of this niche. But, um, so it's been 17 days and I feel like I have more confidence. Uh, the other benefits is clearer skin, more testosterone, better relationships, uh, in this life and in the spirit, spirit world. Okay, I don't have nightmares. When I take a nap, I, I wake up uh, feeling positive. But when I'm sinning or fapping or whatever, I, I wake up and I feel dread from my naps. So my naps are a good in indicator that I'm on the right path spiritually or not on the right path spiritually. Um, so leave a comment if you're stimming, if you're fapping. And do you, are you okay with it or do you want to stop? Because for me, I've been, I've been in one coping mechanism or another my whole life. Um, since I was two, I was rocking. Uh, I became an alcoholic when I was 20. I drank every night for 16 years. I had a heart attack when I was 32 from alcohol. I think from alcohol it could have been from drugs or anything. Um, so I survived that and I don't drink. I have 10 years sobriety. So I'm helping people get sober too. Uh, on my other YouTube channel, it's called sober forever. So check that out and subscribe to this channel. And, uh, anyways, I feel, I feel good today. I feel like I'm getting my innocence back. I don't have as much guilt and shame. I, my eyes are brighter. I feel clear, and that's because I haven't fapped. Uh, Satan will trick you into believing that you have to release your ejaculate or you'll back yourself up and it will be bad for your body, and that's a lie because I, I believe that lie. I'm like, well, it's been a while. I'm going to release it because it's, it's unhealthy. That's not true. Your body will reuse the sperm for better things, and it will build up your chi. You'll have more, you'll have more energy. You'll feel more alive. You'll be unshackled from shame and guilt. Hallelujah.
you know, God is good, okay? And it's okay if you're struggling right now. Uh, there's no pressure on you. You can do what you want, but try to improve your situation 1% a day. Use that compounding effect. And after a year, you'll, you'll be very proud of yourself. And that's what it's about. It's about being proud of yourself. And if you're fine doing everything you're doing, then this channel might not be for you. But for me, I want to stop fapping just like I stopped alcohol and cigarettes. I thought alcohol and cigarettes were hard to quit. Fapping is really hard because it's something I could always turn to. It's free. It's on my body. All I got to do is access it and get a jolt of dopamine. Um, so, yeah, it's really hard. You know, with beer, you have to go to the store and buy it. But with fapping, it's on you. You can access it anytime. And I've created my personal hell. And uh, that's it. So, yeah, these deadly sins, they get worse and worse. And it's, it's not worth it, okay? Um, I'm at that age where a relationship with God is more important than sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And I know that these addictions get worse and worse if you're an addict like me. And, you know, even people like Ron Jeremy, who slept with over 2,000 women, he's, he's, he looks insane now. He's fat. He's, his hair is gray and long and stringy. And he's lost his mind. And what did he do with his life? Big, big deal if he slept with 2,000 women. God doesn't care about that. He'll probably just send you away. Go away from me. You never knew me. I never knew you. You don't want God to say that. And yes, it is a spiritual war. I know for a fact that Jesus is real. He's spoken to me. I've dealt with angels before. And I've also had demons in, in me. I've had demons in me. If you don't believe me, well, just check out my Sober Forever channel. My biggest, my most popular video over there is uh, about my demon possession. Uh, but basically, it's very scary, very dark. And when demons influence your thinking, when they get inside you, they influence your thinking. It's, it's not like they're running around with capes and horns. You know, they're not stupid cartoons, okay? Main, mainstream has dumbed it down and made it a funny little joke because they don't want you to think there's a real spiritual warfare going on. Mainstream is making it cool now, basically, to do, to do this and to basically worship uh, black magic and, and uh, you know, look at American Idol these days. British, uh, or uh, America's Got Talent, or Britain's Got Talent. Uh, some of the people on, the contestants that come on, a lot of them are doing black magic. And the crowd's like, oh, that's so cool. Oh, wow, that's scary. You know, but little do they know. I mean, it's it's basically Satan at work right there. And the crowd's like, ooh. Okay, but your soul is on the line. And I pray for you. All you got to do is just be like, Jesus, please come back into my life. And uh, I miss you. I love you. I want you back in my life. I was very angry, but you are the way, the truth, the life. And I know you died on the cross for all my sins. Thank you, Jesus. That's all you got to say. It's not about church. I love you guys. We'll, we'll continue this. So please subscribe. And we'll talk to you soon. God bless.